In this video, we are going to go over the Deepstone Crypt guide within Destiny 2. And this guide, I'm going to give you an updated guide based on all of my Sherpa experience and getting people through the raid. And also a guide that's beginner friendly in where I will get to the point, I won't talk forever, but I want to make sure that you have necessary information for a beginner and anyone who is new and returning to the game to understand how to complete this raid. The first encounter is going to be Crypt Security, and in Crypt Security, there is no true DPS. In other words, there is no boss that you have to actually take out, but you will have to destroy six fuses, and to get to those six fuses, you're going to actually use two key components in the raid. There are three potential roles that you can have within this raid. Two of those you start to learn about in this encounter. So for this encounter, you're going to want to split up into two groups of three. One's going on the dark side and one's going to go on the light side. You can tell that, but again, one room is dark and one room is light. You can also call it black or white, right or left, but dark and light is probably the easiest way to do that. In addition, there's an underground area that you will use here in a little bit that has some doors. To start the encounter, you'll notice that there are terminals that have what looks like a red guy on it. That's your operator terminal. And to start the encounter, someone's going to go there and pick up that buff. And at that point, they're the operator. And that will come into play here in a little bit. Once you do that, both rooms are going to seal off. And you're going to have add spawn on both, again, on both the dark and the light side. You also have a vandal that shows up with a yellow icon above them that looks similar to the red one that you already have for operator. This is for the scanner. And again, if you've done this public event, there's an event around Europa. You can see a similar thing with the scanner. It's the same thing. So someone not the operator is going to have to pick that up. The primary purpose of the scanner buff is that you will be able to see through the holes in the floor, which again, if you look at this infograph for one through five, to find out exactly the locations that the operator will interact with to progress the encounter. So the scanner, let's see on the dark side, is going to go around and say it's at two and five. The operator is going to know that they need to go down below and they need to use two and five. They can either shoot it or they can use a melee to do that. And that progresses the encounter. To do this, obviously you do it on one side first, whether it's dark or light. Then if you want to pass it to the other one, you have to use the augmentation panels to put it in. So basically you would take the scanner, you'd put it in the augmentation terminal and someone on the other side would pick it up. But here's a trick. There's a servitor that shows up. Make sure you kill that servitor. While that servitor is up, you can no longer use the augmentation terminal. So make sure you do that. So then the scanner goes across on the other side. They do the same thing. And so they say dark is two and five. Light was one and four. At that point, the operator knows which ones that he needs to do. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Some people, once you get a lot of practice, they'll go ahead and send the operator down earlier. And the way the operator gets in is the operator is the only one that can open the doors once they're closed. The operator will interact with the door, again, to get down to the bottom area. One thing to keep in mind is that only one person can do that. So if you have one person and you have someone trying to go with the operator, the doors won't work. So you can only have one person go below. So the couple ways to do this, some people go ahead at the very beginning as soon as the first two are called and they go ahead and they start that process and then just switch scanner really quickly. The only reason you might not want to do this is because once you operate the doors and head to the blow areas, you have a minute before the timer comes in and basically incinerates in the blow area. So some people are going to just wait until they get to all four so they maximize that amount of time. Some people will just go ahead and send someone down immediately so that they can do this quickly. It's again, it depends on how comfortable you are doing the encounter and how quickly you want to get through it. Once you finish doing that twice, in other words, you've done the light and you've done the dark side and you've completed that, at that point, you transition into the next phase of the encounter. So what are you going to do at that point is that the operator, and it's very important to do it in the sequence, the operator that's below is going to send their debuff up. And someone's going to pick that up on the top. And the primary reason is for if you don't get through the entire activity in one phase, they're going to need to repeat this again. So as soon as the person who has the operator, because again, you can only pass one buff at a time. As soon as the person, the operator on the top picks it up, the person who had scanner on the top is going to send it back down to the bottom. And there's a reason for this. When you get to this next phase, you're going to have a bunch of ads show up, including some exploders. So be careful about that but you're going to have the shields come off of the fuses. The problem is you don't want to know which ones to shoot. If you randomly shoot one and it's the wrong one, it'll wipe the fire team. The only way to know that is now that you pass the scanner down to the bottom, the person that's below has to look around the fuses at the bottom and call out which one you need to shoot. To shoot those, they're not that difficult now, but you might want to use something you take out really quickly. Xenophage works really well here. You can use Golden Gun. You can use anything that's powerful. But again, you can use shotguns if you want to be really close. 
But again, you want to take those down as quickly as possible. So the scanner is going to go down there. They're going to tell you shoot, and you'll see that it's it's light and dark side, and just say dark middle, light middle, light right, right, something like that. That's what you're going to want to do. So you do that, and then if you're quick enough you can actually get all six of them in one phase. Obviously at this point, if you don't finish them all in one phase, the same thing happens again. What you're gonna wanna do really quickly is have the operator open the doors to get that personal scanner back up to the top so that they can start the next sequence. Because again, if they're down there too long, they're gonna incinerate. But again, complete this, keep doing this over and over again, and you'll complete this encounter. The next encounter, you'll be facing Atrax-1 and his replicants. So when you first begin, you'll be brought into an area, and you'll notice that the area is divided up into almost three zones. Again, similar concepts, right, middle, and left, that you've added to other parts of the raid. You're going to have your teams split up into, three, into two teams, one in the ground area and for with three people, and one in the space area with three people. There's also a glowing wisp you'll notice in the middle, and you'll also notice that there's some elevators. Those will come up in a minute. The glowing wisp you will not want to use until you're ready to start the encounter. Once you start the encounter, the three people on the ground are going to obviously stay on the ground, and one of the space people are going to stay on the ground as well. We'll get into that in a second. The two people who are going to space will, again, if they can go invisible, that's great. Just make sure Atrax will be there at the very beginning and you don't want to be killed. So have them maybe kill a couple ads and then immediately go up into space. When they go into space, they're going to, and which is one of the coolest things in any raid ever, they're going to want to split up into right and left and start killing ads. The ground team and the one person that is from space that's in the ground are going to kill the ads, including the servitors. Once the servitors are killed, you will have one vandal show up that'll have, again, it'll have the operator symbol on top of it, kill that, and the per other person from the space team is going to pick up that operator and then go up through the elevator. At that point, once the operator gets on the elevator, they're primarily going to stay in the middle and stay near the elevators. We'll, we'll talk about that more in a second on why. But the again, you can continue to kill ads, and then you will see a scanner show up on the space area and you'll want to have one of the people on the team pick up that scanner. So now you're going to have an operator and a scanner both in the space area. One of the things that's probably important too, just to get timing correct, is we don't kill all the ads in the space area until the very end. And there's a reason why. If you look at this map that I'm about to show you, you'll see that there are the boss spawn areas that are both in the ground team and the space team. Obviously, you'll see the Atrax folks that are already in the room but what you don't know of those replicants is which one you need to kill only the scanner can see that once all the ads are killed so what you're going to want to do is again wait till everyone's in position the scanner typically want to have them somewhere towards the center on the space area again so you can see all the replicants and then kill that last ad and then what you're going to notice is that one of the replicants is going to grow is going to glow yellow at that point the scanner is going to call it out and everyone head to that area now the DPS on this is very, very tight, so you're going to want people to head in, and you're not going to want to hit the replicant until everyone's there. If you are running out of time, because you'll, you'll you'll wipe if you take too long, if you do run out of time, go ahead and start. Doing some damage is better than nothing. But ideally, you want everyone to get there, and because of the short duration of DPS, what we typically use is Lament or Swords or things like that. That's typically the easiest way, and do as much damage you can during that time period. And you can either use debuffs like a bubble or... You can use you can use tether or things like that if you have the time to do it. Once you do enough damage, you're going to notice that the replica disappears. Once that happens, the person with the scanner immediately is going to take the scanner and send it back down to the ground area. The operator continues to stay in space, and there's a reason for that. Once you send the scanner back, you're basically going to do the same thing in the ground area and what you're going to do is basically you're going to identify which replicant it is and everyone do damage and then you're going to do that a total of four times before everything resets and you kind of have a lull period the other thing you'll probably have noticed is that when you killed one of the replicants you'll notice that there's a little wisp that shows on top of it a little like ball Someone on the fire team has to pick that up. If they don't, the replicant will actually respawn and wipe the fire team. What you're going to want to do is the operator typically in space, you're not going to want that person to pick it up because the operator is the only person that can shoot that debuff off of characters. So you're going to want to make sure if possible towards the end of the DPS when you're hitting them, if possible, the operator should kind of hang back a little bit at the very end so that they don't pick it up. If you do pick it up for some reason, it does get complicated. You can potentially use ricochet rounds and things like that to shoot it off of you, but again, it does get a little complicated. So try not to do that if possible. So you pick up that de that buff, and the debuff is going to have a 42 second timer. And you'll notice on the screen that there are four airlocks that you can basically shoot that out of. 
What we typically do in the interest of time is we wait until two of those debuffs are accumulated. So there'll be one in the space room, then you kill the replica on the, on the bottom area, right in the ground area, they'll have another replicant that'll show up. When that replicant debuff shows up on that character, you'll send that character up to space so that they can, sh they can basically deal with it. One of the things the operator also has to do is during this encounter, sometimes when you bring the elevators up, then there aren't the elevators aren't down there. So potentially you could run up out of elevators for people to come up to the space area. So the operator every once in a while is gonna have to shoot the elevators to send them back down. So at that point, you'll have the operator go to one of the airlock areas. The operator will then have the two people stand near the door. You pick one, you tell them which one, and they shoot the door that opens the door. The two people with the, the buffs go into the door and then the operator shoots the buffs off of them, sucks them out in the space, and immediately the people who got the shot off them have to get out of the doors. If you don't, you'll, you'll die also. So again, we do that, and you gotta, you gotta be tight about this because while this is all going on, you have scanners and everyone trying to identify additional replicants, right? So as soon as that happens, the person who got a shot off from the ground team needs to immediately head back downstairs, right? Because you're again, you're gonna have this whole cycle of trying to cycle through that, identify the replicants and kill them. So you do this a total of four times, okay? Space, then ground, space, then, then ground. Once you do that, then you get to a lull period. Now, if you've done a DPS, you'll go to final uh, final stand, which I'll talk about in a second. But if you do it four times and you haven't done that, you'll go into a lull period where you just kill ads and everything else, and then you repeat the cycle again. Once you complete that cycle a second time, if you haven't done enough damage, you will go into a final stand. So it's important to do as much damage as possible. Once you go to the final stand phase, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need everyone to come to space. So it's very important the operator continue to send elevators down and you'll have everyone come up into space and you'll the scanner at that point, there'll be like an unlimited number of a tracks that show up in the in the space area. It seems like that. The scanner is gonna tell you which one to go to. Everyone in the fire team will then follow and start hitting that one. And it'll be kind of tight, so people will start getting freaked out and start trying to kill different replicants. That will wipe the fire team if you do that. So it's very important the scanner find that first one, go ahead and kill it. And then depending on how much damage you have left or the timing, you may have to kill a second one. So the scanner is constantly gonna to have to be looking at all of those so that people know which ones to kill. Once you complete that, that's the encounter. So this next encounter is the first phase of Tanix, and it's actually a very simple but frenetic encounter to kind of explain. So first off, this will introduce a new role, which is the suppressor, which I will get into in a second. You'll notice in this room that there are some central bins where you'll eventually have to deposit nuclear cores. The easy way to track that for your fire team is the way we do it is if you invert your PlayStation controller, we would call these R1, R2, L1, L2. Again, as in you come into the room and you're looking forward and you have right and left. So those are very important to track because those are where you're gonna put the cores in that you're gonna get here in a second. You'll notice that Tanix is obviously in the room and you also notice there's augmentation terminals. There's three of them that are scattered around the room, middle, right, and left. So you wanna split the fire team. It doesn't really matter to be honest with you how you split up because this encounter will have you taking roles, switching out roles, things like that all the time. What you wanna do is for the scanner, when you pick up the scanner, have the scanner person look to see which of the two boxes are lit up. Those are the two boxes that you can put the cores into. The operator, when you have the cores, there are three cores that can pop up. The operator is gonna to wanna to shoot one of the terminals, one of the red operator terminals to prevent one of the cores from spawning so you can only get the two. You're gonna have two people to pick up cores. When you pick up cores, you'll notice a radiation debuff that's gonna be coming on you. That has a timer on it. When it gets to 10, you die. So if you're running that in and and it's taking too long to get them into the particular cores, you're gonna wanna make sure you tell the other people in the fire team to pick the cores up from you. And even the people who have roles can pick up the cores. For them to pick up the cores, they just have to interact with you and then you can pick those up. Now you'll notice after the cores spot out that you can't put them in immediately. That's because one of the things you have to do is you have to suppress Tanix. And to suppress Tanix, the way you do this is there are, you'll notice that there are three locations that you can get under the security drones to shoot a tracks get on a security drone, shoot a -trax, that suppresses him. Once he's suppressed, then you can actually have the two people put their cores in. When you do suppress it, one of the three roles that you have is gonna be deactivated. It could be suppressor, it could be the operator, or it could be the scanner. You'll need to pay attention to that, and then whoever has that happen to them has to go to an augmentation portal 
and actually put their their augment in and then someone else has to pick it up. So you constantly have to be switching out the roles. And actually in the challenge, there's an actual order to doing that. So again, it's really good and important to kind of make sure you're comfortable with all the roles. And honestly, we play freestyle when we do this, we just kind of randomly do it anyway. So once you get comfortable, you can do that. Do this whole sequence five more times and then you unlock the hatch in the middle and you get to the encounter. Now, once you do unlock the hatch, and this is a really fun encounter because again, you're, you're crashing the spaceship and you'll see it getting fiery and fiery. You'll notice a hallway with a door at the end. Quickly run towards that because Tanix is gonna be chasing you the entire time. And if he catches you, he's gonna kill you. That door is slowly closing. One person on the fire team has to get through the door. And again, it doesn't have to be everyone or the whole fire team will die. But at least one person needs to get through and that completes the encounter. So then you're at Tanix, and I'm only going to explain to you what I feel is the easiest way, which is the way of doing the challenge. I've noticed a lot of the raid encounters lately with Destiny, the raid challenge is typically the easiest way to finish the boss. So it doesn't, it's the same thing with Tanix. With Tanix, one of the things you're going to notice is that you're spawned into an area. So there's a spawn area, then there's a blue colored area, and orange colored area. In each of those areas, you're going to notice that there are, there are the same bins where you can deposit the cores, right? So same sort of concept. You'll see Tanix kind of in the middle. You'll also see that there's augmentation portals in each of the areas. So again, that's going to come in key. So when you get in the encounter, you're going to kill a bunch of ads. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to call four people who are going to pick up bombs. And you're going to run a number of those people, one, two, three, and four. That'll key in here in a second. And you could do it in any way. You could do it like fire team order or just call it out. The other two people are going to be the operator and are going to be the suppressor. You don't need a scanner in this activity if you do it this way. Now, the one thing is you're still gonna to wanna to have someone pick up scanner. And the main reason for that is when you have the whole thing happen where it resets the debuffs, you're still going to want to go ahead and have the scanner because then that means that you'll have three and the chances of the operator or the suppressor losing theirs is reduced. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to do that. So again, you're going to want to kill ads in each of the areas. You're going to want to have everyone split up. So two people go to each area, to the blue, orange, and the spawn. And you're killing ads at that point. For the actual, op the roles, the operator is going to spawn at, at spawn. The scanner is going to be at the blue area and the suppressor is going to be at orange. So again, for the people who are for those roles, make sure they go to those areas and those fire teams. So again, you kill ads. And then Tanix is going to go to one of the three areas. So you're going to have everyone head over to wherever he's at. Okay. And at that point, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want immediately to shoot off all those four engines. That's going to spawn four balls, okay? But again, the people who were one through four, let's say it's at orange, right? One through four would be left to right would be the locations. Again, looking at this map, you would look at, okay, the spawn is one, your first one, then two, and then at blue is three and four. Again, looking left to right. That way you don't have to do this complicated math of figuring out which box or anything else. You're just looking down the road from where you're at and that's where you have to do it based on your number so again have them do it and have them hightail it towards the area because again radiation times 10 comes really quickly and you're probably going to want to have people pick them up pretty much close to around the same time and here's why after you pick up the balls and run them down towards the other area right at any point there's a ball that will show up on one of the on one of the air people who are actually sending that across and the only person can shoot that off is the operator so have that happen as quickly as possible and at that point the operator then can make sure that they're behind one of the people making sure they can pick up if one of the radiation especially once they're further away if one of the radiation radiation times 10 happened and you have to pick up the debuff from someone else the suppressor at this point has to shoot the three zones that are the area where Tanix is at, right? So let's say he's at orange, you would go to the three drones in those areas and shoot him in each one. You can do something like anarchy on him because if you do that, it will do damage over time. And as you bounce between the different nodes, the three different nodes, it'll continue to do damage, continue suppressing him. One of the reasons you're waiting to do suppressing as long as possible is let's say for instance that you do suppressing right at the very beginning. If you did that and the operator had his augment deactivated, he won't be able to shoot the debuff off of the people and your entire fire team is probably gonna wipe. So again, sequence is sh shoot the engines, pick up the balls, run them back. Operator shoots off the ball off of one of the people. At that point, helps support the people with the radiation. And then the suppressor is going to go in and shoot and suppress Tanix and then also follow people through. Once you do that, since you did all four, you actually get an extended DPS phase. So Tanix is gonna go into the middle of the area. 
and in the middle of the area there's going to be like a like a pile of space junk that's rotating then an area and then tanics in the middle you have to situate your fire team in the middle between those two zones you can see this here on this map what you're going to want to do what we typically do is we set up a bubble towards like about the time we think he's going to spawn we set up a bubble in the back and we jump through that we put a well down in that middle area and then we do dps DPS since he's so close, things like, you can use linears, but honestly things like shotguns, you know, double hot swapping between them is probably usually the easiest way. Since you, again, since you did this with four, you actually get three DPS phases. So you'll just continue doing DPS. He'll boop you out after the first phase. You can then pick up the bubble again. You could do another well, do damage, and you do that three times. Now, if you happen to not get enough to go to the final stand, you're gonna have to complete this whole sequence again. And he does have an arranged mechanic after so for, for so long. If you do happen to get the last stand, at that point, he's going to just warp around the room. And you're only going to have so long before he wipes you. So uh, things you want to do, again, because he's going to warp around really quickly, are supers, things with long range. If you have snipers, things like that, you know, as your alternative, that's a good way to do it. But once you do that, you finish the encounter. So again, really fun raid uh, with the changes coming in with weapon crafting. I figure people are going to want to get into this again. So I wanted to give you advice from someone who's done this quite a bit of time on how to do this with the updated meta and the updated understandings people have gotten over the years versus when the raid first came out. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, join my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.